Welcome to the Accelerate Church TV broadcast. We are so glad that you were tuning in with us today. We are excited because Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching on Give No Place. This is a basic fundamental. As Christians, we are to give no place to the enemy. Let's head into the sanctuary right now with Pastor Jeremy Five. If you're angry all the time, it's directly connected to your ability to get free from some of the junk that the enemy's put on your life. You'll never walk in deliverance as long as you live angry. And a lot of people won't be honest about it because anger is expressed in a lot of different ways in people. For some people, it's insecurity. For other people, you could just tell because, well, they're hot-headed all the time everywhere they go. Other people are more passive-aggressive about it. You know, it's hard to, hard to tell, but I know this. we got to get out of anger. And the Bible's very clear about this. Many people need to repent for allowing anger to fester on the inside of them. Some have done it for years, some for decades. It's driven some people's whole life. I think about, I don't mean to talk about him so much. It's just, it's just these illustrations come to my mind. Dr. Barclay said when he was 10 years old, his, his dad passed away. And when you're a kid and you lose a parent, man, it, it, it can affect you. It can cause anger to be seated on the inside of you. And that's what happened to him. And when the, te- uh, the teacher, the pastor, stood there and said, Son, you're, God needed your dad in heaven more than he needed to be here. It, anger said, he said, anger just filled him, rage filled him. He kicked the pastor with all of his might right in the shin and ran out of there. And he said, I had demons from that moment until in Vietnam when I called out to God. Wow. For years and years, he was driven by that. Isn't that something? What was that? Anger. Anger. Now, I already know the feedback I got just from Wednesday night from so many of you, and I love all of you. I don't preach this so you feel bad. I preach this because I believe the Holy Spirit wants to uproot this out of your life. So we have to deal with some situations that aren't always pleasant, but that's what a father does is say, hey, let's deal with that and let's uproot that. Amen. Anger sometimes has deep roots in people. And I understand that you just hear one message on it. You're not necessarily just going to receive that and walk free. But I'm challenging you and telling you, you got to make this year count, which means you got to get rid of anger where it drives you. The only exception to this is a righteous anger. And you cannot just go off on somebody and say, it's a righteous anger. That doesn't make it righteous. What makes it righteous is that God said it makes him angry in the Bible. If something makes him angry in the Bible, then that makes you angry. See, let me just tell you, this is real talk. This is what it looks like. It's easy for you to live with your precious, darling little children and then look at you and tell a lie and you say, don't lie. And then a few minutes later, they drop a ball and you say, what were you doing? What did you just impart into them? Lying, you shouldn't do. But dropping a jar, I will never do again. Based on the emphasis that we just did, what we did is we poured anger into that child. We imprinted anger upon them. Lying is a much bigger deal. Disobedience is a much bigger deal than spilling the milk. Now, if they do it on purpose, that makes it disobedience and rebellion. But see, it's easy, and I can tell by your holy silence That you, like me, know that's real talk. That it's easy to be that way. I know from experience. Hey, I'm not even a full 24 hours away from hearing that my little daughter decided to get a pen and write in our new van some letters. I'm glad she's hungry to learn. (laughs) That's not where you write. So what do I want to do? What are you thinking? What are you doing? That's what I want to do. But I thought, you know, it was just the other day she told me a line. I said, you shh, you shh. And I had to work it up myself because I was focused on returning an email or something important, you know. And this is the way life is, guys. So we grow up. And some are like that, some aren't. But some of you know, all around my parents, I tell you what, I wouldn't even spill the tea for nothing. But you could rebel right to their face and they don't say a word. Because we have things all backwards. What happens? A lot of times in childhood, anger is poured into you. A lot of times as an adult, 
You go work out here in this world, people are on edge. They're angry. They'll pour it out on you just because you're there. Now, you don't deserve it. We get that. But they'll pour it out. Don't let it in. Don't let that even water maybe previous seeds of anger someone tried to plant in you. Hebrews chapter 12, say, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. It says, pursue peace with all people in holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Well, that's pretty plain, isn't it? Verse 15, looking carefully. These are the kind of verses that a lot of modern Preaching just ignores because they just make it sound like, well, God is so good that it just doesn't matter. He's so gracious. Then I read my Bible and it's like a slap in the face. Look carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. I mean, who's out there preaching that? It's not marketable in America. If I'm more concerned with my marketing degree to build my church than the truth, then all I will do is produce sons of hell that think they're going to heaven. A deceived group. That's sad. The Bible, though, says, and your Bible says it. I don't know if you'll look at it, but it says, look carefully. Look carefully. Look carefully. Look carefully. I'm repeating it on purpose. Look carefully. Don't be haphazard about this. Just whatever. It's all good. God's so good. All just walking in the lilies and the flowers over here. It's great. What on earth is going on? We're in battle. We're in a fight for survival. The dark cloud is here. The glory is here. You don't get to the glory by accident. you got to have a fight. Warrior spirit about you. I will say this. If you can't be angry, you're not even worth a wooden nickel. There's got to be something that makes you mad, but it's got to be the right thing. And What we have to do is not get this where we channel our anger on the wrong thing. And I've been guilty of it, and I know you have too. So I'm staring at the screen, so none of you are like, he's looking right at me. Well, I could look at every one of you, and it would apply to every one of you. The Bible says we got to look carefully lest we fall short of the grace of God. And I want you to catch this part. Lest any root of bitterness springs up, and it causes trouble. Now get this. I've said this before. In fact, it was funny. I turned on the TV for just a minute. I was on there preaching this morning, and this is what I saw myself say on the Accelerate broadcast. I said, if you are walking in unforgiveness, the, those seeds of that root of bitterness will come out and affect everyone. I thought, well, I'm preaching almost the same thing today, except I'm coming from this anger. I mean, this angle. <laughs> <laughs> anger can be down there and be the root. I'm coming from this anger. That makes sense too, right? I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at the devil. Ain't nobody mad but the devil, right? If you let anger fester, it will cause a root of bitterness. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418-8913. If we don't rid ourselves of the anger of man by the root, it will taint, it will pollute, and it will trouble our lives. And there's some great examples in the word of this. Are you ready to see them this morning? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Yes, Go to Genesis chapter 4. The first example is Cain. Adam knew Eve, his wife. Genesis 4.1. I'm glad you're here today. She conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Therefore, verse 2, she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. First two human beings recorded, besides Adam and Eve, are Cain and Abel. First man, 
born from a union, a marriage, first thing that God established back in the Garden of Eden was marriage. The fruit of that, firstborn, first human of our kind, not created directly by God, was Cain. Isn't that interesting? A murderer. Now, Abel was a keeper of the sheep, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, verse 4 says, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. That sounds good on the surface. He brought an offering. He brought an offering. And just because you bring something to the Lord doesn't mean he has to receive it. Yeah. Abel, verse 4 says, also brought of the firstborn of his flock. Oh, I know we've looked at this in series gone by, but I want you to look at it again today in Genesis 4.4. 4. He brought the firstborn. The Bible records these details for a reason. The firstborn means his best and of their fat. And the Lord, it says, respected Abel and his offering. You know, Abel... I was talking about the laws of prosperity earlier. Abel activated one of those laws. He showed honor to God and just jot this down. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30 says it like this. It says, the Lord speaking, those that honor me, I will honor. And it literally says, says the Lord. Those that honor me, I will honor. That's 1 Samuel 2, verse 30. You need to know that because before that, you know, that was written after Abel. So before that was even written, Abel activated that law. So God's always been this way. It's just his laws exposed to us and show us who he is and his parameters. I'm thankful for that. God respects those that respect him. And we know that Abel respected him because I want you to look at this verse right here in Hebrews 11 verse 4. It says, by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Now, this is God's word. So you can't ever judge from the sideline what God, he's all-knowing and he has all knowledge and he sees these guys bring him an offering. You know what the most American Christians would do? How dare you criticize Cain? He brought God an offering. But God was looking at the motive in the heart and he said, no, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. See, he brought his best. Did you know God knows whether or not you're giving him your best? God knows whether or not you're giving him your best right now when it comes to listening to the word. He knows. Are you giving him? Because if you give him your best, you're showing respect to God. Forget me. What about God? you got to show him respect. And when his words come forth, if you show him respect, he'll start speaking to you. Here's what it should look like. You come to church and you hear me saying something and God just starts speaking on the inside. Sometimes you have to write down as fast as you can to keep up. Oh, I love those kind. Praise the Lord. Some people see they come, well, I already heard this about Cain. I know something. Come on, really? You ain't receiving nothing. You might as well stand up and walk out. I mean, that's, and it's no disrespect to me. It's, that's how you are to God. He's not going to speak anything to you. And who's going to tell you this that loves you enough to tell you in this American culture? It's all about tail kissing around in America. All these politicians, that's all they love. That, it's so funny. It's election season. They'll holler, hey, I, I hear you want to get involved with politics. And I'm like, you know what? Go find somebody else. You're going to tell me what I want to hear right now when you want my vote. I'm looking for those that want to stick to the word after they're elected. Where are those? Let us know what the populace wants in America. you got to obey God rather than man. And you may not know this, but any civic position, any of them, they're ordained by God. Just like pastors are ordained by God, it's just they're on a different level out here. Civic leaders are ordained by God. Well... Offerings were ordained by God. Doesn't mean people are doing it his way. Cain didn't do it God's way. He did it his way. God's way is bring me your best. That's why he says in Malachi, most Christians only know chapter 3, verse 10. They don't even read the first two chapters where he says, hey, to his people. He says, where's my honor? They said, what do you mean? He said, if you're governor, you're going to give him a gift. Would you give him leftovers? I'm paraphrasing, of course. And they're like, well, certainly not. If the governor's coming over, you're going to roll out your best, right? You're going to wear your best, not just going to roll out of bed without your hair combed. 
are you? If the governor's coming over, surely you wouldn't do that. Let me just help you. If you get a visit from the governor, don't do that. Comb your hair, put on your best. You say, oh, I'll get to go visit the White House. Wear your best. That's what you do to show honor and respect. We're going to the house of God. Well, just, just whatever. No, wear your best. If your best is a T-shirt and flip-flops, wear that if that's your best. And then holler at us. We'll help get you on the discipleship path real quick where you get some dress clothes. I don't know what it is. You're challenging me. I'm about to just preach. <laughs> Trying to go somewhere with this. The Bible says Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. See, now get this. God himself was the witness. There, there's only, at this time, four humans alive. You got this? So God is dealing with people just directly right now. Now we, we got billions. God's omnipresent. By the way, the devil's not. So that's why with that hole in your hedge, you might have had a hole in your hedge for a few years, and he doesn't know it yet, but if you start talking about it, he's, you're going to bring attention to it. But God, he, he's, all, he's omnipresent. But, but check this out. Man, I'm just, shh, let's, let's get focused. He obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying. God testified of Abel's gift. And through it, Abel being dead still speaks. I heard something this week that, really, I mean, just hit me like a NFL linebacker in the ear hole, man. I mean, just Bam! Still recovering from this. We talk about John the Baptist, right? People say, well, preachers shouldn't get involved with calling politicians out. And I heard this guy say this, man. It just, I'm telling you, it just hit me hard. He said, let me ask you something then. Why do you think John the Baptist lost his head? Because he said, hey, Herod, you can't sleep with your brother's sister. Well, Herod wasn't going to kill him, actually, even though he confronted Herod on that. But guess who got angry? The one he was having an affair with and held that against him. When the time came, she said, when her daughter went and danced, which was ridiculous, in front of a provocative in front of all these men, and the king was so pleased, said, I'll give you anything you want. She didn't know what to ask for and went and asked her mom. And guess what? Anger caused that root to stick. And she said, I want John the Baptist's head. Question. Here's what got me. What was the executioner's name? You want me to sit here all day long? Nobody's going to tell me the answer. Nobody. Nobody. I'd say the person that knows the Bible best in this room is sitting right over here, Pastor Ricky. Do you know the executioner's name? Nobody knows it. But we know John the Baptist. Things may be not the way we think. He still speaks, though John's head got taken right off the top of his shoulders, presented on a platter. We still talk about him. He still prepared the way. Even if it came to losing our head, we better prepare the way. Jesus is coming again. Now, as long as you don't have to eat locusts and wild honey. I'm just, I'm just messing with you on that part. I just that, that just hits me. Abel, though he's dead, still speaks. That's amazing to me. Why? The fact that he gave God an honorable offering. The fact that it ticked off his brother. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, when you start honoring God the way he's called you to, it's going to make people angry that don't honor. You know what it is? It's the thing I've said before. Your all-in exposes their partial in. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. Anger changes a person's countenance. I love the fact Josh brought this up on Wednesday night a week and a half ago. 
If you're on the job and they know you're a Christian and you have a sour countenance, what a, what a dirty shame. What a dirty shame. All of your witnessing, all of your preaching was all for naught. Now Cain, he brought an offering. God didn't respect it. Instead of saying, Lord, what do I need to do? And bringing his best. That's what God would have told him. Bring me your best. Like Abel did. He could have had the same result. But instead, he got angry. Now today, this word's coming forth. And you can either receive it or it will maybe make you angry. I'm sure I've learned as a pastor, I don't judge it by your countenance. I watch people in here look like they're sucking on a lemon and <laughs> shake my hand. Man, that's the best preaching I ever heard in my life. I'm like, did you have a lemon drop in your mouth or what, bro? I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> I can't even look. My wife has made fun of my angry face. She used to literally just like, la like point and laugh. Show me your angry face. I'd be like. <laughs> She's like, that ain't no angry face at all. Sad to say she's seen me angry. I've had to probably repent for anger more than anything in my life. So I know this is hitting hard, and I can tell just by the, the I'm telling you the holy silence in this place, this Pentecostal blood bond, Holy Ghost filled church. It's because this is a serious and present danger. Why? People do you wrong, and it ticks you off. Or, or in this case, think about it, he brings his offering. His brother, younger brother, brings an offering, his most excellent. And you know, I, I, it's like you could just see, he's like, don't take all that, man. Cain was like a modern-day Christian. Don't take all that. You don't take all that. Uh, if you want God's respect, it does. Well, men, don't, men it don't matter. I know. I, hey, I'm not pastoring for men. I'm pastoring for the Lord. I'm glad all the men and women are here that are here. Praise God. But check this out. Cain was very angry. And the Lord said, no big deal. You are dismissed. Good night. Have a good day. How many, how many think that's what happened? That's not what happened. Next verse. Somebody say next verse. Just elbow your neighbor. Wake him up. Tell him next verse. Let me get back over there. I shouldn't have closed my Bible. See, Genesis. That was a lame joke anyway. It's not even noon yet. Somebody said, what time are you ending, Pastor? <laughs> Who give me two, 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 three, three, grip, get up here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, up in the balcony, he's like, three o'clock. Verse six, Genesis four. So the Lord said to Cain, remember Cain's very angry. The Lord said, why are you angry? That's what the Lord, he, he told me. Preach that to my people today. Why are you angry? Well, I've got a good reason to be. Look at this. Why has your countenance fallen? Sounds like to me God's watching. And you act all attitudish. I, I, know, I know we'd like to live in this bubble like, oh, everybody's all great. Man, I've already lived in this world long enough to know. I saw a guy in the hallway one time. I said, hey, man, how are you? Just like that. Smile, hand out, everything. You know what I got back? Look the other way. Look like he stuck his chest out like a peacock, man, or something. I don't know. I, was, I said, what in the world? That's how people act. And they act that way to God and think, oh, he don't notice. I've acted that way my whole life. Just because you look hard and act tough, all it is is anger. You seen these guys? I mean, I'm telling you, I saw a dude rolling on look like 36s the other day. I never seen a car jacked up so high. And I mean, it's a spectacle, so you can't help but look. I'll, here's the thought in my mind: How does a dude crawl up in that old Impala? I ain't lying to you. These are like 36 inch rims. I am not lying to you. The bottom of the car was probably about that high. I'm six four. How on earth am I going to crawl up in that? That's what I'm thinking. And I'm all looking. And I look, and this dude's just mad mugging like he's the hardest gangster you've ever seen in your life. And I, you know, I'm like, 
you're in a spectacle of a vehicle here, man. What do you want me to do? I'm just like, wow. It's green in case you ever want to see it. You <laughs> just don't stare too long because you'll get, you'll get a dirty look. What on earth? I want to say, why is your countenance falling? No, I, just, I didn't ask him that. But his countenance had fallen for sure. I thought the whole point of putting rims like that on, besides looking like a wagon, like an old western style wagon, riding that rough, I thought the whole point was you wanted people to look at you. I thought that was the point. If you're going to roll like that, what do you expect? What are you staring at, man? I'm staring at your car that you got jacked up higher than any car I've ever seen in my life. That's all. <laughs> oh. Cain. Let's get back on point. Lord, help me. The Lord said to Cain. Get your giggles out. It's okay. Why are you angry? Why is your countenance falling? Now, I want you to really pay attention to this part right here, verse 7. God said, if you do well, okay, in context, what does that mean? Resist anger. Don't let it take you over. As he was very angry, his countenance fell. God said, oh, why are you angry? Why is your countenance falling? If you do well, will you not be accepted? There it is. Do it the way I said, you'll be accepted. God is no respecter of persons. I showed you that about gravity, about prosperity. It's this way with everything. God is no respecter of persons. If you do it his way, he'll accept it. He'll respect you. You do it your way, there's no guarantee. And so he tells Cain this. This is God of the universe talking to Cain. You're talking, for lack of a better term, face to face with God here. You are talking to God himself. And he says, why are you angry? If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, what does that mean in context? If you let anger have its way. Notice this. Sin lies at the door. Insight. Every opportunity to get angry is an opportunity to get into sin. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's A Television Broadcast. While that does wrap up today's message, that does not conclude the message in its entirety. If you would like to hear the rest of this message, you can head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the Sermons tab. Or if you're in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Hey, if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next television program.